Hello, my name is Tony Beers, and this is Movie Grades. Hello everybody, Tony Bears here again, and in this episode of Movie Grades, I'm going to be talking about Prometheus. Now, before I start my review, I would like to give a spoiler warning, because I will be spoiling this movie, so if you don't want the movie spoiled, turn the video off right now. Now, I'd like to say that I am not an Alien fan. In fact, when I saw the first Alien movie, I know a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this, but... I thought it was boring. I thought it was terribly paced. Now, I understand that it was basically a horror movie and they were establishing mood, but I thought that the movie could be a l much tighter. The best part about the first Alien movie, in my opinion, is the H.R. Geiger designs. I thought they were brilliant. I think the H.R. Geiger is a brilliant artist. The second Alien movie, Aliens, I thought was probably the best in the series. It was much better than the first Alien movie. The pacing was a million times better. The movie itself was more of an action movie and the action in it was excellent. I've only seen bits and pieces of Alien 3 and 4 and I've heard they sucked anyway. I've also seen both Alien vs. Predator movies, and a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this as well, but I thought the first one was actually pretty good. But the second one, Alien vs. Predator Requiem, I believe it was called, that one sucked. <laughs> I didn't like that one at all. Now, on to the review of Prometheus. So the basic story of Prometheus is that the scientists find the same cave paintings on different ancient civilization ruins all over the world. And they theorize that these paintings are a map to another planet and they're going to follow this map to explore this planet. Okay, one of the really bad things about this movie is that the scientists in the movie are who they're, they're supposed to be scientists, but they act really dumb. It's like, hasn't any of these people ever seen a horror movie before? One thing, they don't take any weapons along with them. <laughs> they were a so they were going to take weapons, but someone said, well, we don't need weapons, we're exploring, you know, we're not fighting anything here. So that's their first mistake. The next mistake is that one guy notices that there's oxygen in this cave, even though there's poisonous air outside the cave. And he decides, well, well, there's such oxygen in here, I can take off my helmet, you know. And even... The other characters are telling them how stupid it is, but they go along with them anyways, and they also take off their helmets. That's mistake number two. Another mistake is this one guy finds this snake-like creature, and what does he do? He tries to be friends with it and tries to pet it, you know? And the thing about that is it's not even a cute creature that you might want to pet, you know? It's ugly. It looks like a snake. And this snake creature is even practically threatening this guy, you know, he has a hood like a like a, a cobra. Uh, if I remember correctly, he even has a rattle like a rattlesnake. And <laughs> he's sending off these warnings and this guy isn't paying attention, he's being really dumb. That's mistake number three. And for number four, this is, must be the most retarded thing I've ever seen almost in any movie I've, I've ever watched. And that is, there's a scene where the alien spacecraft is falling down and it's, and there's uh, some people underneath it and it's falling down in a, in a straight line. It's just coming straight down and these people are in its path and they just run in a straight line trying to escape this thing and it doesn't occur to them to maybe run away from the shadow that's coming down on them run outside the shadow 
No, they just run straight right where the in the path of the shadow, right when the alien spaceship is coming off down, and that's, I swear, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen someone do in a movie. Uh, maybe not the dumbest, but in a, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in a long time. And again, these are supposed to be scientists we're talking about here. <laughs> Needless to say, that person didn't survive. The funny thing is, uh, one that's two people, and one of them is smart enough to get <laughs> out of the way of the shadow of the falling object that's falling on top of you, that's a million tons that's going to fall on your head. One person actually <laughs> decides to get out of the way. <laughs> and uh, that is mistake number four. Okay, now here is a huge spoiler here, so if you've watched the video already, you know it's going to have spoilers, and this is a big one here. There are two remaining survivors, and they decide to go on, on the engineer's ship, and instead of, you know, which would be the smart thing, which would be to fly home to Earth, where you can tend to your wounds, report on what's happened, and get help in fighting these aliens. Instead of going straight to Earth, these two people decide to go on this ship, which is 2,000 years old, by the way, and take it to the home world of these engineers, as they call them, and basically to ask questions to ask why uh, they did this <laughs> and, which is fine that they want to know why I understand them I want to know my why myself but they were just attacked by one of these engineers who nearly killed all of them and they decided to go to a planet which has I don't know how many other engineers, could be billions of them, with just the two of them on board. They don't know if there's any food on a ship. They don't know how long the journey's going to take them. They don't know how much fuel's on a ship. They don't know how to run it. They don't know what it runs on. They don't know how to fix it if it breaks down. And they decide to take it to this planet which they've never been before which they don't know what to expect to figure out why <laughs> and that is dumb it's not as dumb as not running away from a falling spaceship but it's pretty dumb and one thing that's pretty bad is the old man makeup on Wayland it looks terrible. It's it's awful, you know. Um, it looks like a Halloween mask. It is so bad that I never once believed that he was an old man. You can. It was obvious that this was a younger man wearing old man makeup. It, it just looked awful. And speaking of Waylon, here's another huge spoiler here. He was supposed to be dead and when it's revealed that he's alive nobody seems surprised nobody goes, oh it's you I thought you were dead nobody says that they don't act like that they're just oh here here he is you know and as soon as it's revealed that he is alive about five seconds later he dies and I couldn't understand why he wanted the crew to think he was dead in the first place. The big reason that he came along on this mission is that, you know, he's extremely old. And he believes that there's something on this planet that will stop him from dying. Why he thinks this, I don't know. I, they never say why. They, they don't never give any clue as to why he thinks that something on this planet will stop him from dying. Another thing that I didn't understand was there's an android on the ship named David. And 
he does a lot of things. They never give a reason why he does them. He seems to be sabotaging of this mission in some way. He just does all these things without anybody knowing that he does them. And as far as I know, no one telling him to do these things. It seems that he has an agenda. And why would an android have an agenda? See, this movie raises more questions than it answers. Some people have said that this is a, is a part of a trilogy and that the answers will come in the upcoming sequels. Which is all fine and good, but a movie, even a movie that's part of a trilogy, should stand on its own. This movie never feels like it has a satisfying conclusion. Now, despite what I've said so far, this is not a bad movie. In fact, there's a lot of very good things about it. The story is pretty good. It raises a lot of questions about religion, philosophy, and the origins of man. And there's quite a few intense scenes that have you on the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen next. As far as the acting goes, most of the actors did a great job, especially Michael Fassbender as David the Android. After seeing him in 300, Inglorious Bastards, and X-Men First Class, I'm beginning to be a fan of him. Now the action in this movie is really good. Now I wouldn't necessarily call this an action movie, it's more like a sci-fi horror movie, but what action it has is really good. As far as the special effects go, they were excellent. This is a very visually interesting movie. All the aliens, the engineers, the creatures, the sets, the props and everything, they all look great. So overall I would have to say that this movie is slightly above mediocre. It's not that it's a bad movie, it's good, but it's not great and I don't see what everybody loves about it. I thought it was better than Alien and it's definitely better than Alien vs Predator Requiem. It's nowhere as good as Aliens and I would actually have to say now I know a lot of people are gonna hate me for saying this as well I think it's about equal with the first Alien vs Predator movie. Sorry, that's just the way I feel. So, my final grade for Prometheus is a C+. My name is Tony Beers, and I'll see you next time.